So as per usual, I always forget to film my sketches or my starting process for a project. So let me show you quickly the run through of my sketch. I started off by sketching my dungarees that I want to paint and what I want to do with them. So I was just kind of trying to see what I wanted to do at the back, what I wanted to do at the front. And if you look here, I initially wanted to put all the text at the back and I kind of don't didn't want that anymore just because I felt like the text on both legs at the back did not look right because I've done a pair before it's on my Instagram and I like the idea of having one leg in the front and one leg at the back like al um, alternating with the text so then I started just sketching on the leg to see if I can get an idea of kind of what I wanted to do so if we look back at the sketch here I then started playing about with the, the shape I wanted what leg I wanted and then here like kind of what angle and what direction I wanted it to have. And in the end, I settled for this hand. I think I really like the way it is because you can see a detailed hand along with the orb next to it is the text that I plan to write right next to it. So then that's for the front leg with the alter uh, alternating back leg. And then here, I also sketched out the other hand that would go on the other leg with the text that would go as well on it. The dove is included with the hand. So let's get to the actual painting and sketching onto the denim. So to quickly show you what I'm working with, I have a pair of dungarees here that I'm going to paint. And I'm not going to paint anything on the top here. Now starting the actual process, you will see me sketch onto the denim with a pen. The reason I do use a pen is because I, on darker denim I find it hard to see. So I either use a pen or a jelly roll, like a white one. And I'm not using any measurements just because I already know the size of the hand that I want to have on the leg. Unlike with the hand, I will be measuring this other trouser leg on the front and the back because this will be where my lettering will go. So I need to measure out the length of the trouser leg and then how many characters I have including spaces. With that, I will divide the length of the trouser leg with how many characters I have and that will give me the size of each character for when I draw it on the leg. It's kind of give and take because with the spacing, I do sometimes make the space a little bit smaller when I actually go to draw just because I think a really big space is a bit odd. When I do these art projects, I usually do have music in the background. So there will be numerous moments throughout all my videos where you will see me do something weird with the equipment that I'm holding. Like right now with this ruler. As I mentioned before, I used a pen to sketch out the hand. And so when I went for the lettering, I went with um, with a Posca pen, like a thin Posca pen. I forgot what size it is. But um, I just find with lettering, it's better for me to use a white pen because if there is a mistake, I actually don't know why, I just, I just do. I think it's easier to use a white pen. Painting on denim is honestly probably the most annoying thing to do just because it sucks the paint dry. Like you will use so like such an abundance of paint and it's just not smooth and the fibers, they have those, you know, diagonal lines. So the best thing to do to make sure that when you actually go into painting with the colors and detail and tone, you should put a white base layer on everything that you do. And it's better to try get that white layer as neat as you possibly can, because when you do come in with the color, those edges will look nice and smooth. Looking back on the footage, I do think that a way to make this easier, to make it easier is um, to have sketched out the, the hand and the orb on a separate piece of paper and then cut around it onto the denim, just because it would have alleviated a lot of the mistakes and the errors that I made because there will be a lot of pen marks and I'm hoping they come out in the wash, but you know. In some parts of this video where I'm doing the white base layer, you will see me putting another quick layer or like just stroking a few more streaks in just because some areas, again, they suck up so much paint that you need to put an extra layer on top just to make it a bit more opaque. Now I'm just repeating the same steps that I took on the front, just sketching out the lettering with a white pen.
when I was doing this project, I actually had no clue how I wanted to go about painting it. I just knew that I wanted, you know, the hands and the lettering and, and the stars and stuff, but I just had no idea what I wanted to do with it. I didn't really want to do a realistic style because again, it's it's a little, it's just long. <laughs> I, was, I was really not bothered. And I wanted to go for more of a stylistic style or stylized style. I, I'm not sure, but I thought to myself, you know, I'm just going to draw random lines on this hand and paint them colors. To paint on denim, I just use regular acrylic and I mix it with GAC 900 from the company Golden. Uh, usually the rule is about half-half, so half the paint you mix to half the golden medium and then that makes it into a fabric medium. That's just thinner and more flexible so that when it does go in the wash it doesn't crack as easily. With my paint application, it's also random. I just picked out a colour that I mixed first. I did this with five colours, so I mixed a light blue, a bluey green, a yellow, a really mauve kind of purple, and a pink. When I was initially painting the trousers with the white, it did take up a lot of paint. So when I was painting with the colours, I assumed it would be the same situation, forgetting the white base layer would make the transfer easier. So I mixed so much colour without realising, so I ended up having to use the blue in making the green, purple and all the other colours. That's why the colours are such kind of odd shades on the front. Like the pink you will see is just such a, in my opinion, such an odd pink. It wasn't the pink I was going for, but it was the pink I ended up with and I don't regret it, it's just not my initial choice. With the hand finished, I went on to colouring the lettering and this was also such a random choice. I just had a lot more yellow left over and I thought to myself, I'm not gonna, you know, I'm not gonna waste, I'm just gonna use it. And when I stepped back, I looked at the hand and I liked the colour choices I had made but it just still felt very dull so I took the green that I had and I mixed it with some blue to make a darker shade of green and just outlined the whole hand where the creases would be, put some shading in. So recently I bought this um, palette scraper and I just thought I had to. I just had to put a clip of me scraping this paint off. It's just so satisfying. When painting the star, I was a bit conflicted. I didn't know if I should use the same patterns I used on the hand or I should just make it one solid color, which is how I was going to go about it. Ended up going with just like gray and metallic, 
because it separates itself from the pattern piece and doesn't doesn't blend in together. Original references that I was using, all of the stuff was metal because it is a statue. So I just went off the reference I had. You will realise I ran into a lot of problems during this piece. Not problems, but rather a lot of dilemmas. And again, when I stepped back and looked at the star, it, the grey was so was on the same tone level as the trousers and it did not stand out in any sort of way and I just didn't want to have to repaint the whole thing or make it lighter. I took the lightest grey shade that I made and I made an outline the same way that I did with a hand. And I repeat the process for the dove on the back. I felt like this hand kind of reminded me of the Thanos, you know, gauntlet, I think it is, with the forks. I made the knuckle pieces quite large and quite gem-shaped. And when I went to paint it, I was like, wow, someone's gonna think I'm really ripping off Thanos. Another thing to mention is that when I was doing this piece and I had finished just the front, I showed it to my friends, because I always like to get a nice, like an opinion. And <laughs> the thing that made me laugh was my friend said to me that it looked like the pattern on the buses that you see in London, you know, the TFL buses. And once he said that, I just could not unsee it. So with GAC 900, you do need to heat treat it once you finish with the paint. So you need to make sure it's fully dry and then you need to iron it for like three or five minutes. So here you'll see me drop my trousers, drop a bit of, I don't know what material that is, but it kind of reminds me of gauze. And, uh, and you just iron it on top of that and allow it to heat up just a bit. I'm sorry for the state of my room, but I do have a very small sliver of floor to use for ironing. And here is the final result. 
I'm super happy with how this project came out. I think it's super dope. None of it was how I anticipated, but it just came out far better than I imagined. And again, sorry for the vertical camera. I completely forgot when I was filming this that it's vertical and it should have been horizontal. But it's all good. You can see what I'm talking about. If you've liked what you've seen today, please like and subscribe, leave a comment, share. It'll be much appreciated.